All right, welcome back to Between Rounds here on Heavy.com. And as we said, we got Sam Stout, UFC fighter, sitting uh, between Dave and I. And uh, Sam, you're going back to Montreal. Another back to one. Montreal yet again. It um, is. It's your home yeah. court. Yeah, it's pretty much like my home away from home. I've considered it that, to be that way for uh, for a long time now. I, you know, I started up my pro MMA career there, and uh, you know, it's always nice to go back. Exactly. And uh, your opponent this time, they, they seem to be getting a little tougher and tougher for you, right? Well, that's you know, Is that the that's, goal? The, that's the way it works. You know, you gotta <laughs> keep uh, keep fighting and keep improving and, and fighting better and better opponents and working your way up that ladder. So that's what I'm trying to do. You know, the last segment, Sean talked about how, uh, you know. You don't ever look past a fight or anything like that. But, and I don't want to do that, but your career in general, um, are you pleased with, you know, where you're at and how it's going and how it's yeah, progressing? Definitely, you know, definitely. I, um, I started in the UFC at a pretty young age. I did my first fight back in 2006. And at UFC 58, I was 21 years old. Um, so, you know, I've had some ups and downs in my career, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm young enough that I can take it as, take them as learning experiences and, and, and you know, grow from them. And luckily, I've been able to, to keep my spot in the UFC. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm learn, paying the same dues as a lot of guys, but only I'm doing it on a bigger stage. So that's right. the way I see it. And, you know, I think it's, it's working out well for me. Right. Now, going into this fight with Jeremy Stevens, as a fighter, fighting a guy that you have to be constantly worried about his knockout power, I mean, does that, how mentally, how, does that change anything going into the fight? Does that, does it make, does that bigger concern than, you know, a guy like Joe Lau's on your last fight who's a submission guy? I mean, the not, dealing with that. Um, it's not that I'm any more concerned about Jeremy Stevens than I was Joe Lowe, say Joe Lozon or one of my other opponents. It's um, a different type of concern, you know. I got something different to worry about and, my, and, you know, me and Sean have been working on that together, you know, on a different game plan. Um, there's always dangers in that cage. And, uh, you know, this time it's just a different danger than the last one. <laughs> right. Now, obviously both of you guys have the expertise in the striking, but for you it's more technical striking. It's more crisp. Do you think that is definitely, if it does stay on the feet, that's going to be the key is just picking him apart? Yeah, I definitely think um, in this fight with me and, with me and Jeremy it's going to be, you know, I, I, I have, have a feeling it's going to come down to striking, and I, what I think it's going to come down to is, uh, is technical striking versus power punching. Right. And, uh, you know, hopefully my speed and my technical ability will, uh, will allow me to prevail in this fight over his, you know, his pa raw power. Definitely. Sam, talk about this weight division, you know, in the UFC. Uh, do you consider it one of these divisions where there is absolutely no room for error whatsoever? Definitely. Well, you know, there's always a, a little bit of room for error. Uh, MMA is a pretty forgiving sport, but, you know, it's a very interesting time in the, in the uh, in the lightweight division right now, with Frank Yeager stealing the title or taking the title away from uh, from BJ, it really changes the face of the whole division, you know. Because now it's very difficult, you know, to say who's the number one guy. Is it is it still BJ Penn? Is right. it Frank Yeager? Is it Gray Maynard who's beat Frank Yeager? It's right. it's a you know it's tough and it really opens up a lot of doors. And I think it's it's really going to be interesting to see how this division plays out in the next few months to to a year. Right. How surprised were you with that victory for Frank Yeager? Um, I was, you know, I did not, I did not pick that win, that <laughs> him to win that fight. I did not pick him to win that fight. But um, you know, you got to give the guy credit. He, I don't right. think I've seen anyone come in with as smart of a game plan to fight to fight BJ Penn. He stood and kick, kickboxed with him and wore him down. And and once he did wear him down, down, that's when he went for the takedowns. You know, we've seen other guys who, you know, on paper may even be better fighters than Frankie Edgar right. that have just come in and, and not come in with the right you know, right game plan to fight BJ Penn. You know, you can, he's not a guy you can press up against the cage and, or, or take down with a single leg. You gotta wear him down and then you gotta shoot that power double. That's a, the only way you're gonna get him down and that's, you know, and, and Frank Yeager fought a, a brilliant fight against him. Right, now, speaking of the mind of a fighter again, is it, do you think most guys beat themselves when they face like a champion like per se a BJ Penn before they even get in there? Do you think they're beat as they're walking to the cage? Um, I think it happens sometimes, but I think that's uh, part of one of the challenges of being a high-level fighter. You know, you have to learn to. Uh, you know, it's 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 kind of a cliche thing to to say, but it's really 90% mental. This sport. You know, if your if your head's not in the right place, you've 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 lost before you've stepped in the cage. Right. So you know, a big part of it is going out there with the right mentality and you know not over, overthinking things and, and just trusting in your training, trusting in your coaches, trusting in yourself. 
Right. Now that the bullseye is on Frankie's back, as opposed to BJ's, do you think there could be a tendency for some fighters in the division to say, oh, now wait a minute. Maybe there is a chance here that I can take this. I mean, that's a dangerous approach. To it, yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, there's a lot of guys, uh, you know, he's got the title right now. And, and, you know, there's a lot of guys that may not have been the best matchup to fight a guy like BJ Penn that, you know, are just stylistically it matches up much better. And that's one of the interesting things about MMA is, you know, it's st styles make fights. So if you get a, a champion who has a different style than, you know, the past dominant champion like BJ Penn, then, uh, you know, it opens up a whole lot of doors for a lot of guys. Well, to get back to your fight, what kind of doors do you think will be open with a win over Jeremy Stevens? I mean, if you could play matchmaker, who would, where would you put yourself in the division after a win? Um, you know, to, to be honest with you, I haven't really even, even thought about uh, a next opponent after Jeremy Stevens. I think that's, uh, you know, kind of an arrogant thing to do is, is start thinking <laughs> about stuff like that before you've, before you've, you know, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But, exactly. um, you know, in, in terms of my career, I'm ready to just, um, you know, keep stacking wins and keep, and keep you know, put, fighting the guys that the UFC wants me to fight. Absolutely. Don't worry about Dave. He's always trying to air, you know, get people <laughs> to air the dirty laundry and, 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 and you look four or five fights down the road. You know, that's what he wants you to, to say. You know, he'd, he'd probably like you to say there's some 16-year-old kid right now that's, uh, that's wrestling in high school that, that, that you're going to fight in five years. But, uh, you know, you mentioned the fact you come into the UFC at a very young age and, you know, not only fighting-wise but attitude-wise, you know, there's a lot of growth. You know, Team Tompkins now with Vitor and, and yourself, I mean, do you also feel a sense of uh, responsibility to Team Tompkins? Um, I think I'm one of the, one of the, you know, I'm one of the f main ambassadors for Team Tompkins. I've been here, you know, really for a long time training with Sean since, basically since he started training guys for MMA, I've been been training with them and you know even before that with kickboxing and and uh, you know he's not only my coach but he's my brother so uh, right. I know I got to represent him well and uh, and all my teammates well because they're you know they're all like brothers to me so um, anything that I do reflects on them right right all right Sam well we appreciate you taking some time you were doing a little training on it quite a contraption over there I don't what do you call that I've never seen something I don't like even that. know what it's called it's uh, just a resistance uh, you know, resistance pulley system that uh, makes it a little diff more difficult to do a lot of exercises. <laughs> oh yeah, the hardest part looked like just putting it together. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't even know how they do that. Yeah, it takes a little time to get to get all hooked up in there. Exactly. I think people could go to the uh, the website here or Team Tom because they can actually uh, check you out. Yep. Uh, working us, on that uh, thing. Watch some some of our training secrets there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, air it after the fight. But uh, we appreciate you coming on. Obviously, best of luck uh, in Montreal next weekend. We'll be out there and. Uh, We'll be cheering you on, definitely. Thanks for having me. All right, Sam Stout, everybody, with the UFC. We'll be right back here in Between Rounds for Heavy.com.